Hello my dear friends, welcome to my channel that is learning and programming with Chetan. Today in this particular video, we will going to discuss about one of the important conceptual question in Java programming language. And the question is, is Java passed by value or passed by reference? Friends, why I am creating this particular video is because I realized that so many of Java professionals are still confused on this particular topic even after having so many years of experience in Java programming language. So let's try to understand whether Java is passed by value or passed by reference. So friends, let me first tell you that Java is passed by value and I will prove you by the help of Java program. So friends, this is my employee.java class and inside my Java class, this is my instance variable that is employee name and it is of type string and here I have created a parameterized constructor of our employee class and inside my constructor I am initializing the value of our instance variables and here I have created a methods to set and get the value of our instance variable employee name and friends here I have created one class with the name test java pass by value or reference and inside my class I have created one main method and by the help of this test class we will try to understand that why java is pass by value and not pass by reference so my dear friends as we all know that there are two types of memory in java programming language that is stack memory and heap memory and all the reference variables and primitives are stored in our stack memory and any object which we create in java is stored in our heap memory and friends one important thing which we should keep in mind is that any method which get execute in java programming language is provided a separate private area in our stack memory so our main method is having a different state trace and our swap employee method will execute in a different private area similarly our update employee method will execute in a different private area in our stack memory so friends now let us try to understand that what actually happen when we run our test class so when we execute our test class then our jvm will call this main method and a separate memory area is allocated for our main method inside our stack memory and in these two first statements we are having two reference variables emp object 1 and emp object 2 and here we are creating an object by using new keyword so our employee object 1 is pointing to an object with employee name as chetan so here you can see that our employee object 1 is pointing to an object with employee name as chetan and this object is created inside our heap memory similarly in our second statement our employee object 2 is pointing to an employee object with employee name as Anand. So in our memory diagram, you can see that our employee object 2 is pointing to an object in heap memory with employee name as Anand. And friends, here I am printing the values of our employee object 1 and employee object 2 before calling our swap employee method. And friends, this is our swap employee method and by the help of this method, we are trying to swap the values of our employee object 1 and employee object 2. So inside our swap employee method, we are having two parameters as object 1 and object 2 and these two parameters is of type employee. And inside this method, we are having one more reference variable as temp object. And friends, in this line number 14, you can see that we are calling our swap employee method and inside our method, we are passing two reference variables as employee object 1 and employee object 2. So when this statement is executed by Java virtual machine, then at runtime it will create a separate state trace for swap employee method inside our stack memory. So it will call our swap employee method and our flow will come in this particular method. And friends, in our swap employee method, we are passing employee object 1 and employee object 2. So our object 1 will refer to the value of our reference variable employee object 1. So here in our class diagram, you can see that our object 1 is referring to the value which is pointed by our employee object 1. Similarly, our object 2 in swap employee method is pointing to the value in heap memory which is referred by a reference variable employee object 2. And initially, our temp object is not referring to any object in our heap memory. Now, my dear friends, in this particular statement, you can see that we are assigning the value of our object 1 to temp object. So here you can see that our temp object is referring to the value which is initially pointed by object 1. That is employee name equals to Chetan. And here our object 1 is equals to object 2. So by this statement, we are assigning the value of object 2 to object 1. So here you can see that our object 1 is pointing to an object in heap memory with employee name value as Anand. And here our object 2 is pointing to the value of our 
temp object so when this statement will get executed then our object 2 will point to an object with employee name as chetan and once the execution of our swap employee method will complete then the private area which is allocated to our swap employee method inside our stack memory will be deleted or will be deallocated so friends one thing you can notice here that our employee object 1 is still pointing to an object with employee name as chetan and our employee object 2 is still pointing to an object with employee name as anand and in these statements we are printing the value of our employee object 1 and employee object 2 after the execution of our swap method let me run our program so friends here you can see that before swapping the value of our employee object 1 is chetan and the value of our employee object 2 is anand and after calling our swap method the value of our employee object 1 and employee object 2 is still the same which means that even after performing the swap operation the value of our employee object 1 and employee object 2 is still same this is because we are passing the value of our employee objects in place of passing the reference and after completing the execution of our swap employee method the memory which was allocated to the swap employee method inside our stack memory is deallocated and our employee object 1 and employee object 2 is still referring to the same object which they were referring before calling the swap method friends now we will see one more example by the help of which you will be able to understand that java is passed by value and not passed by reference so here i am having one more method with the name update employee and this method is accepting one parameter with reference variable name as employee object and it is of type employee so friends in this statement we are calling our employee object method so at runtime the separate private area is allocated to update employee method inside our stack memory and inside our update employee method we are passing our employee object 1 so initially when our update employee method will be loaded in our stack memory then our employee object will refer to the value which is pointed by our employee object 1 in our heap memory so here you can see that our employee object 1 is pointing to the same value which is referred by our employee object 1 and here we are calling the set employee method of our employee class and we are setting the value of our employee name as Manish. So here you can see that initially the value of our employee name was Chetan and after the execution of this statement the value of our instance variable employee name is updated with Manish. Now in this statement you can see that we are creating a new employee object with employee name as Ram and we are assigning this new employee object to our employee object reference variable. So here you can see that now our employee object reference variable is pointing to the new employee object with employee name as Ram inside our heap memory. And here in this statement we are again setting the value of our employee name to Chetan. So here you can see that our employee object which was initially pointing to the object with employee name as Ram is updated with the new value as Chetan. And friends after completing the execution of our update employee method the memory area which was allocated to our update employee method will be deallocated in our stack memory and here in this statement we are printing the value of instance variable employee name of our employee object 1 now let me run our program so friends here you can see that the value of our employee object 1 was chetan and after calling this method when we are printing the value of our employee object 1 then its value is updated to Manish. So here in our class diagram you can see that our employee object 1 is pointing to an object with employee name value as Manish. That's why in our console we are getting the value of our employee object 1 as Manish. Friends, I hope that by the help of these two examples and our class diagram, you are able to understand that Java is call by value and not call by reference. Friends, if you are still having any doubts or queries, then you can write your queries in comment section.